So in this short session we're going to take a look at what we need to do to the EQ3-2 mount from Skywatcher to fit um, motors onto the RA and deck axes. <coughs> so at the moment what you have is the conventional arrangement which allows us to um, move the RA and deck axes with these uh, um, slow motion adjustments. <coughs> so the uh, the first thing the motor um, says is we have to remove these because you can't actually use the motor and the slow motion adjustments together afterwards, which might be a bit of a pain to be honest, but let's see. Um, and I, what I was wondering was whether it would be a good idea to fit just one motor on the RA, which would allow me to still slew around with the um, with the deck axis um, with, the, with, with the clutch and that and not have to worry about it um, but well we'll see how we go I'm going to do both of them for now okay so here's the box the motors came in um, I don't know if you can see it but there's some little Russian writing right down there uh, here, let me out of focus. Um, <clears throat> so, not the most expensive motors we can find, but it was a full set. Um, so let's see what we've got in the box. Okay, this looks like the the battery box. That's good. One motor in the bag, and another motor. Set of tools. And, yeah, the controller as well. And that's it. Okay, good. Okay, so we're going to fit the RA motor now. Here's the RA motor. And uh, all I need to do apparently is to fit it so that the screw holds it in place through this here and fit it onto the RA axis um, control. That would be the slow motion there. So this is where you need three hands as always. Loosely position it so that I can make sure that the bellows coupling, uh, which you can see here, um, that, so that that's pretty much lined up and not gonna cause any friction or tension. Looks okay. So we'll tighten that up and change to the other Allen key. Okay, what I just noticed after fitment was that the the screw on the bellow coupling wasn't going in very far, uh, and I'm I'm sure the reason for that is that uh, these slow motion controls have a flat on them. Maybe you can just about see it in there, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> which I basically uh, just loosened it again and turned it around so the flat matches up with the screw, which is obviously going to be a better idea. Okay. All tight, we're all good for that. So onto the deck motor. The deck motor is a little more complicated. Um, so what we need to do here is we've got this bracket up here and there are two parts to the motor. The first was this um, little pinion gear, which I just put on. And having learned from the RA motor, look for the flat. allows it to go in a lot further yeah. and then the main part of the motor basically sits onto this on the top of the uh, um, mount there's already this uh, pre-cast lug so they obviously thought about fitting motors right from day one which is great
So all I can see now is that the, <coughs> the pinion gear actually needs to come out a bit. It doesn't match up quite with the, the motor drive. That doesn't fit so well. It's either a bad screw or a bad hexagon key, I'm not sure which. Okay, but we're on, I think, and reasonably tight. So what we've done is put some uh, rather large D-cell batteries in the um, holder and that just fits into the case I guess. It's quite a weight actually, should help to stabilise the tripod I guess. I always wondered what these were when I saw them on pictures hanging around there. Okay, I've already checked uh, by plugging it into the controller and switching on and I get a green light. Don't know what it means at the moment, but it uh, at least it's green, not red. So coming back to the mount, I'm just going to leave that over one of the azimuth screws for the moment. <coughs> so these two leads need to come out. Okay, and they're marked on the top, one's for RA and one's for DEC, which is good, because <laughs> they're identical other than that, same colour and everything. Oh man. That's the DEC, let's just plug it in the top. They're pretty much uh, like Ethernet or phone cable ones, I think they're RJ11, so that makes them phone ones. So it's set on um, a default of four at the moment and off. North and south, I guess, is hemisphere. So we'll put it onto north. And clutches are all tight. And so we've got deck. And nothing happens. And we've got RA and nothing happens. Actually, you know what? Um, I had another look at it and I've left it plugged in and sure enough when I touch the motor I can actually feel the da -da 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 of the stepper motor going um, and I'm not sure if you can see it from this I have to say dead slow can you see it driving the wheel here yeah not exactly going to set the world on fire is it one thing about these controllers is that you're obviously not using a go-to mechanism um, because I think the tracking speed it says on here even on the eighth speed it says the 8x button allows forward at eight times the tracking rate approximately two degrees per minute that's not much you know that's <laughs> yeah a few fingers in, in terms of uh, astronomical distance um, and the same thing goes back um, when it goes backwards at seven times the tracking rate. So, uh, yeah, that's not really going to get me very far. I think that's really only going to be used when you're close to the actual um, object that you, you want to study or photograph or track. Um, in the main, I think what I'm pretty much going to do is basically just uh, I would be slacking it, slacking it off the... Obviously, you have to get, get it to polar aligned, set up through, through the polar alignment. Um, and then I would be basically just uh, just moving things around, um, <laughs> maybe not quite like that, um, setting it up to approximate the position, same here, uh, just by slacking it off the RA, uh, move it approximately to where I need it to be, uh, lock it out, and hopefully that will then carry on tracking um, directly. Yeah. I can feel it moving and actually on the, um, yeah, you won't be able to see it, but uh, it's actually driving through this this, uh, this side of the uh, slow motion control. Great, okay, next problem is what to do with all these cables and the controller. I guess it will sit down on the tray. What I would say in conclusion is that 
Um, it's a relatively painless process to fit these, uh, these motors um, and controller. It's all pretty well designed for the telescope. And uh, yeah, what's it taking me? Half an hour, 40 minutes and 80 or 90 pounds and I should uh, have money and I should be able to track celestial objects a lot more accurately and who knows, maybe even get some good photographs out of it.